Today we are going to discuss about the construction of genomic libraries. So here comes a question that what is a genomic library? Let us understand by the fact that the genome of most of the organism is very large to deal with. So it's more useful to cut it down into the smaller pieces so that you can deal with it with much more ease. And this can be easily done by using different restriction enzymes. Now let's have a look on how do we make a genomic library. Well, for this case, we start off with our cell of interest. And the first thing we are going to do is to isolate all the DNA from the cell. Because once we have the DNA, then we are going to use the restriction enzymes to cut it into the smaller ones. Then comes the plasmids. A plasmid is very standard and easy way to get foreign DNA into bacteria. But one thing that is important to notice here is that we have to select the restriction enzyme very carefully. So in this case, we are going to cut up our DNA and the plasmid with the restriction enzyme. So once we have cut up the DNA and plasmid, now we need to ligate them together using DNA ligase. Once the cDNA is pasted into the plasmid, now we are ready to actually transform them into bacteria. It's mostly very easy to transform plasmids into bacteria. One common way to transform is to use heat shock, whereby you heat the bacteria and then cool it down rapidly, which causes little holes to open up that allows the plasmid to be taken up by the bacteria. So basically, what we end up here are thousands of bacterial cells, all with different sections of the DNA. So combined, all these different sections form the genome, the original genome that we have. But they are basically much smaller sections. They are much easier to work with. And this combination of all these different cells form our genomic library. We hope so the information delivered to you will be helpful to you in your study. Stay tuned with us for more interesting videos and lectures. Thank you.